are you, Jason? I'm doing well. How are you? Thank you, Jason. He's uh, the head of uh, Fiat North America. And uh, with the new baby, of, uh, this is not a baby because this it's is not a baby. baby. This is a big boy. <laughs> the, big, the big boy. So let's talk about the new Fiat 500X and what is the difference between the rest of the models in the family, which has grown a lot in the past four short years, five years yeah. since you came back in the U.S., right? Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's been a little over four. The, the 500X is our first crossover, um, so that's exciting. But um, beyond that, first all-wheel drive offering, and you know we've loaded uh, we've loaded this vehicle up with a ton of safety and technology. You know we've got the blind spot monitoring in this vehicle, the forward collision warning, uh, rear backup camera with rear cross path detection. Um, so it's it's loaded with safety features, and there's 70 other standard safety features in the vehicle as well. But uh, so it's a lot of firsts for us, not only in the segment that we're playing in, um, in the safety and technology, but again the big one for us is all wheel drive. Yeah, exactly. And that's a big difference because uh, people can, for example, I have, I can give you a couple of examples. A couple of friends of mine, she lives, one of them used to live in Miami, she's moving to Denver. She owns a Cinquecento, the, the, the original one, and she's yeah. moving to Denver. And then she wants to really find out about this one because that's her car, Yeah. what it's going to be. So I, are you predicting that that's going to be more or less like the, the tendency people already with Fiat coming back to trading a car and they say, okay, now they have this. Yeah, I think I think there's a couple things there you hit on. The, the consumers that, whether they're relocating or they actually live in Denver or the Northeast, as I mentioned yeah. earlier, I think is a really big opportunity. Inclement weather is part of a purchase decision when you buy a vehicle. And whether it's all-wheel drive, 4 by 4 you name it, that, that always is, is front of mind. So... Um, in a lot of areas that we just, you know, we, we do a nice job with Fiat, but we know we can take it to the next level. That's where all-wheel drive becomes extremely important. And then also, um, it allows the consumers that have the Cinquecento today to grow with us and graduate with us because, again, lifestyles have changed. So yeah. it's it's really the best of both worlds. Yeah. So you're entering into this segment that is very competitive, probably the most competitive segment and uh, the fastest growing segment in the industry, right? It is. So um, what, what, who do you see as your main competitors and what are the, the advantages that you see for a Fiat 500X? The main competitors today, many countrymen, is, is, is quite obvious. The Nissan Juke is another one that uh, that's, that's definitely a direct competitor. You know, you've got the Chevy Trax that's entered the market. I think, you know, as far as size and functionality, they're there, but, but I don't see much cross-shop. Uh, same with Buick Encore. The interesting ones will be the new entrants that are coming along yeah. with us, specifically the Mazda CX-3, very sporty, very, you know, a lot of similarities between the two cars, and then the Honda HRV. So we're all going to be hitting the market at about the same time, so it, uh, it'll be a lot of fun, but I think... We've got a lot of heritage. We've got yeah. I was gonna touch into that. I mean, you have like a brand that has come <laughs> back and has reverted in the U.S. and like has su success. I mean, maybe the volume is not where you want it to be yet, but it's it has grown fast. I mean, only five years, right? Yeah. Well, you know, again, we're not a mass market volume brand. That's not what uh, what we set out to be. And 2014 was our best year. So, you know. That's now, uh, we've kind of set the bar there for, for the U.S. and for North America. And then you bring a car like the 500X into the market where, you know, again, like we talked about, the segment's just booming right now. Yeah. And uh, so the timing's right for us to go there and, and capitalize on that. So this car shares the platform with the new Jeep Renegade. And even though it's all we drive, I mean, it's quite different. I mean, it's not uh, meant to be like for extreme off-roading, right? Correct. I mean, the purpose is something else. <clears throat> yeah, so the, the, the hardware is the same, but the software is not. Meaning, you know, again, this vehicle is much more, it's all-wheel drive, but it's much more on-road performance. Yeah. Whereas the Renegade is, is designed to be that off-road, you know, take you anywhere, get you anywhere type of 4x4 um, four four system. So two completely different executions, although the hardware is, is the same. Okay. And um, going back to this one in particular, how many uh, versions, how many models, and what are the price range for, for this vehicle? So we've got two personalities. Let's start there. So we've got the street, which uh, will start with uh, the pop model, and that and goes up to easy, and then lounge. And then we have the trekking series, which is trekking, and then trekking plus, which we're actually in right now. So there's technically um, five total trim levels. <clears throat> and the starting price on the Pop is $20,000, and then the starting price on the Trekking Plus, which is the highest model, is just over 27000 
So the base model, all, 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 all of them have all-wheel drive system, or they do not. So the oh, they, okay. they all their all-wheel drive is optional on every model except for the base model. Oh, okay. So um, <clears throat> and here, like we're sitting into the car, and like starting from the steering wheel, I mean, you can tell there's a lot of detail and attention to detail in the materials. I mean, this looks really, really nice to the hands, to the touch, and everything else. This uh, in, the, in the front panel, like the texture of all every material. Has been taking a lot of care with it, right? That was that was a big thing for us. You know, we pride ourselves on not being a commodity brand, and you mentioned it earlier. It's going to be a, a hyper competitive segment that we're we're going into. So, the style we we're always comfortable with, and the design, and being able to play off heritage. But the interior was where we put a ton of attention, and it shows. I mean, you know, this is this is not only in in the small crossover space is this an impressive interior, but you can go up, you know, into extremely more expensive vehicles, and I think find a hard time finding as good interior as we have in this. So uh, this model is made in Italy, like uh, like the Renegade. Or? Correct. It's the same plant. It's in uh, Melfi, Italy, yeah. where both the Renegade and the X are built for global distribution. And this is a true uh, global distribution. How many countries are, are you going to sell this car in? This car will be sold in over 100 countries. And uh, the, all the other models, uh, what's the mix of the, the origin? I mean, because the L, I think it's made in the Czech Republic? Or? It's made in Serbia. In Serbia, I'm sorry. Yeah. The 500 is made in Mexico. Yep, in Toluca, Mexico. And then the, the X is um, going to be distributed in Italy. That's a pretty amazing, you know, how the, the, the world has come together in the industry. Yeah. And you can, I don't know how you manage, because you probably don't sleep much. Yes, you get sleep so overrated. Exactly. Uh, but it's, it's a global, it, it, this is just the world we live in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's global. It, 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 it is what it is. And now that, you know, we've created FCA officially, it's uh, it's nice for us to be able to capitalize on that and uh, tap into, to, you know, distribution channels that we couldn't, we couldn't have done. Before. So, um... Fiat owns Chrysler, but as you were saying, like the merge of both companies have made like, both of them like much more powerful, right? I mean, you can really uh, extract resources and, and I think from from each other and come up with like really nice products. There's yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, we're you know we've officially became one company, which is Fiat Chrysler Automobiles yeah. now. So uh, the synergies are fantastic. The ability to tap um, strengths from one another has been has been a big part of our growth. Um, you know, again, I mean, for, from a corporate perspective, five years in a row of year-over-year -year sales growth, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's pretty challenging, too, because, I mean... It doesn't come easy. <laughs> exactly, it doesn't come easy. But I think with this one, I mean, you are predicting that this is going to be a game changer for the, for the whole brand, because, yeah. I mean, obviously, this is a completely different car that has a, many new options that consumers are going to be looking in different markets where you're not doing that well, right? Yeah, I think it opens us up, again, back to the all-wheel drive into markets that, that simply that is a must-have. Um, but then you look at all the features and technologies that we put into the vehicle. So it's a game-changer for the brand, and it should definitely take us to the next level. Well, thank you very much for your time. I know you're busy here in California with the launch of this car, and uh, good luck with it. And I don't think you need the luck, because you have a good product. Well. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting. Thank <laughs> you.